talk to you, and I've never done any talks of 30 minutes. So I would have to ask you to be patient and kind with me. You're a young crowd, so I hope you'll forgive me. Uh, typically, I do do presentations that are an hour or an hour and a half long, but I'll try to really be concise and uh, bring us all to the point. So, and there will be people there helping me to go through the slides because I don't have access to my laptop. So, my name is Olga Arsenyuk and uh, in my past life I finished a degree in psychology but I never uh, did it when I moved, uh, never practiced it I should say, once I moved to North America which was first US and then Canada. So now I am uh, pursuing something that's called uh, energy medicine and consciousness medicine Consciousness medicine being a new term that I'm going to uh, expand more about. And I know you are a well-educated crowd and people that are really, uh, as far as I understand, even though it's my first time here, but as far as I know, you are people that follow along with what's going on in the world and hold it close to your heart with all the shifts in consciousness, with what's going on with our planet. And so I will skip then the introduction of that, but uh, if we can go to the next slide. So I have to acknowledge this partner of mine that is always part of all my presentations and uh, his name is Mr. Marcus and he always makes sure I keep philosophical perspective on life and keep learning new things. He likes French cheese and meditation. <laughs> he likes it a lot. We practice meditation together and I really mean it. I've never seen a cat doing meditation and he does it with me because I practice a lot of meditation. So he joined me in and we do it together. Can we go to the next slide please? So this is what I will try to talk to you about today in 30 minutes. God bless me. Human consciousness at crossroads and consciousness medicine. So, uh, can we go to the next slide? So, here is a question for you, those that are listening right now. How many of you think that shift we go through, and I'm assuming we all know, you all know that we are going through a shift, a global shift on this planet, but everyone has their own ideas about this shift. Some people buy food, some people build cabins, you know, in the woods, some people think, uh, never mind, it's all uh, not true. Some people read Mayan calendar and all other calendars and educate themselves that way. There are many ways people look at it, but we all know something is happening and I'm pretty sure you're all aware that shift is happening. I just need to know what does it mean to you. So how many of you think that shift we go through is the end of the world? As it says in many ancient cultures where truly the calendar ends, this is it. And this calendar that they predicted, or they, they did, they calculated with uh, amazing mathematical precision. This calendar has been at work till, till up till now, till actually to be more specific, till October. And now this is the end of it. So how many of you think that this is the end of the world? None of you do. Okay? That's good. But Happy New Year to everyone. <laughs> Because what you think come, comes and manifests. How many of you think that shift we go through is just shift in consciousness? All right, most of you. Well, none of it is true, actually. This is not true and this is not true. It's always a combination of a few things. So let's find out. Can we go to the next slide, please? Trick question. So I'll start from the bad news so that we could uh, go to the good news. The bad news is, and that is the truth, that our planet and all life on it is in crisis. Can we go further? And here is the good news, that the self-healing impulse of manifestation, it's a complex word, but I didn't know how to say it better, self-healing impulse of manifestation. Every cell in your body has a self-healing impulse. If you cut yourself, you heal. You don't know how you do it, but it, you heal. So. There is the healing impulse programmed in every form of life on this planet and everywhere. So that's what we call self-healing impulse of manifestation. Is continuously unfolding and creating more healing tools for us. Tools to go through the shift. And our job is to tap into this information and use these tools wisely. So, 
before we will just focus on this consciousness part and just consciousness consciousness shift, I really decided it's important for all of us to bring our minds together and take this very, very seriously of what is actually happening with the planet. Because then from there, I hope, uh, as you will process it, and you might know some of it or all of it, but as you will process it with your mind, with your heart, my hope is that all of us, as citizens of this planet, will take personal responsibility what do we do with this information and what does it mean, this whole shift, and where does it take us? So, astronomy, that's what's really happening, if we can go further. Earth is going through galactic equator, gravitational pull lessons. So this is the actual uh, astronomy, that's the truth of it. We've been uh, going further and further away for a few thousands of years, to be more specific, four thousand something. And now we are making a curve and coming back, and there will be a galactic alignment in 2012. So this is an astronomical event. This is the scientific truth. And of course, if you understand that we are born and we live on this planet, which we are, we're connected to this planet, we are rooted in this planet, this shift cannot not affect us. Our brain is an electrical organ, our heart is an electrical organ. As a matter of fact, all, all organs are electrical, they run electricity but just more subtle, so uh, conventional medicine didn't get to measure it yet. But my point is, it affects us. It affects us in the most profound way. It affects Mother Earth through climate change, through all kinds of natural disasters. Our planet is shaken and it will continue to accelerate. So no, it's not just about shift in consciousness, is the point I'm making. Another one, our poles are shifting. And that's another event, and that's another truth, the physical truth. So I cannot expand on all these points, because I know I have only 30 minutes, but if you can make them like points in a point format, most of your students here in your head, and to research it further, you'll be amazed at what's really happening, and it's real. So can we move further? Uh, new Zodiac, well, this is relative. It's been happening, again, for a long time, and uh, Planets are shifting, so we are present now in the new zodiac as it is. So where we are now is not what was even a hundred years ago. So it's been gradual, we're just not acknowledging this. And uh, those that do, um, this is a little, uh, you know, th there is a gap between astronomy and astrology. Not many believe in astrology, but all astrology is, <coughs> is really, um, the study of how planets affect human health, human psyche, human emotions. So this zodiac has been shifting for a while, and if you believe in astrology or not, uh, if you are born in a specific sign, you are not that anymore. Not because something shifted overnight, it just wasn't acknowledged. So we all kind of move up. Let's say I'm born in Cancer, I'm now in Gemini. Some people get like the double of their sign, so, uh, yeah, it's not for you to even kind of focus on it. Yeah, that's why it, it moved. I have it on the jump drive, sorry. It was normal on my Mac computer. It's just, just to give you an idea. Check on internet. This information is available. It's very, very interesting. So, resonance frequency of the Earth went from 7 Hz, which is also other no, otherwise known as Schumann resonance frequency, that every cell in our body, especially our lower energy centers and our immune system and our adrenal glands are resonating with this frequency. It's now changing. It's 14 in many areas and continues growing. Brain, being an electrical organ, goes conformal with the Earth's resonance frequency. So what do you think goes on with our brain? Shifting consciousness. It's shifting consciousness, yes, but it actually <laughs> has to shift electromagnetic pattern. Like, literally, it has to shift it. Uh, what's happening is these kids, these new kids that are being born, they do have totally different resonance frequency of their brain, and they put them on medication. The ADD, ADHD, these are people with just different computers. They are adjusting to the change. Our educational system is not ready for them. Uh, nutritional, nutritionally, we don't know how to support them. They have totally different brains. But that's again a very large topic. 
But what I wanted to say is brain already is changing. It's not like it will change. We're dinosaurs. Our brains just have to adjust to those that don't have ADD, ADHD. What, what, what literally is ADHD is, I can do my homework, I can check my phone, I can check my email, I can do 15 times, 15 things per minute, but if you will talk to me about one thing, I lost you, my attention is not with you, you lost me forever. Like I have to be involved in at least 15 activities. Totally different brain. You know, human species evolutionizes, uh, it's not like we're going to grow another set of arms or legs, I hope. But nervous system keeps developing, and that is the development of the brain. This is what's happening. Nervous system goes through evolution. Uh, this is uh, interesting for those of you that are familiar with the Mayan calendar. I'm just giving a brief overview historically. What has been happening, what is happening, and what will be happening, because if we don't know what was happening and we don't have awareness of that, then we don't know how to really survive in the changing reality, and it's changing, and it's not only consciousness that's changing. So, according to my calendar, nine wave history of life cycles on Earth, I'm not going to go into details again, this information is available anywhere, including internet, but just pay attention to this. First, cellular. 1.26 billion years. Mother nature was really taking time. Mammalian, 63 million years. 3.1 million years. 158,000, 7,000, 394 years. Planetary, galactic, eighth cycle, and there are nine. Those of you um, that are familiar with the chakra system or energy centers in the body, we also have we have uh, actually seven and then eight is considered to, to be connecting us to our ancestral field or genetic information and nine is transpersonal nine is connecting us to the place we came from and i'm not going to talk about that place everyone has their belief systems about that but we came from somewhere so nines universal uh if you can, yeah. sorry <laughs> that was very good I'm not done yet. Okay, maybe I should be done. Nine's universal. 234 days only. Start March 9, 2011, and end it this October. So, um, basically, according to the mind calendar, the end of the world has already come. This, the world as they knew it has ended. And now what? Party. According to records preserved from ancient cultures, as well as new scientific discoveries, uh, we know for a fact that life on this planet was either catastrophically reduced or wiped off in cycles. And these cycles are known to be 4,200 years. At this time, um, we are again facing this cycle, and how do we know this? because of the astronomy and physics of what's happening with the planet. Things are happening, things are lining up. Things will not be the same. So the time for this shift starts in 2012, 2015. I want to show you something fascinating and very interesting. That's not a Mayan calendar, but it's an Egyptian calendar. If we can go further. So everyone is familiar, familiar with Dendera Zodiac? that was uh, found in Egypt. And what is fascinating, that this is another very precise calculation of planetary movements and cycles and how our planet is part of this galaxy and this galaxy is part of this universe. We somehow develop a consciousness, I think, you know, that we are in the center of the universe, human beings. I find it sort of strange. We got disconnected from, from the bigger picture and uh, as far as I'm observing in my practice that I have for more than 27 years, working with human health and energy medicine and using consciousness tools, what I'm observing, that's what's making people sick. This complete disconnection from the place we came from and the perception that we're not part of this universe. Now, what's fascinating about this, if you see this little square, and I have a better picture of it, um, in the next slide, but I'm just going to talk some, about something. 
So like I said, officially all the calendars are done and in that little square, I don't know how well you can see, we are finishing up the age of Pisces, the two fish swimming in two different directions. Conflict, controversy, corporations, fear, fear-based consciousness, all that, it's, it's polarity, but it also gives birth to the new consciousness, to the new things to evolve and develop. So there is a place, and like I said, I have a better slide, but this is the original picture of it, carved in stone. There is a place right in there, in between these two fish, where there is so-called square of Pegasus. So there are hidden plates where there is no information written in there, and this is time we live in. They are called programs of destiny. So no one knows where the way they are, they are hidden somewhere, and no one ever found them. So this is in color, and this is where you can see it. This is, and that little square thing is what I'm talking about. It's an actual tablet where the knowledge about what's going to happen after is encoded. There are various interpretations in various cultures, and I respect indigenous cultures of um, you know, any continent, because I think they possess this deep wisdom and knowledge and that goes from generation to generation, this core understanding of life and how it functions. So they all agree on that, that right now is the time when we really write our destiny. I don't want it to ring in your ears as another cliché, because it's not. So in those plates, there is an information how to activate our DNA, how the consciousness changes and shifts, but also there is an information there, coded, and no one, no one actually has it. I mean, somebody has it, but we are not ready, apparently. But everyone agrees that we are writing our own destiny. What does it even mean? We are in this ninth wave of unified consciousness. We come from the non-awareness Collective unconscious. Anyone is familiar with the guy named Carl Jung? I never know how to say it in English. Uh, because I, in different languages it sounds different. Is this Jung or Jung? Or Carl Jung. Jung. Carl Jung? Jung? Carl Jung. Carl Jung. Okay. But you know who, who is that? I have that same it, problem explaining my own name. Yeah. <laughs> See, then uh, that makes me feel better. Thank you. <laughs> He's not my relative though. But on a soul level, I, I think he might be, because his studies, his ama amazing studies of collective unconscious, uh, which is this transpersonal um, realm of human consciousness, and studies he did are absolutely amazing. So we're coming from that unconscious, where your life is run about 95 to 97 percent by unconscious realms of your brain. Let me give you an example, so that it will not sound just like words. For example, you struggle in relationships, or you struggle with your health, or you struggle with money, or there is a genetic disease, or something keeps not working in your life, and keeps not working in your life. So 95 to 97% of that, according to research, that was done in transpersonal psychology, brings us to the understanding that the reason for that is in your unconscious not only in your unconscious, which holds your transgenerational patterns, ancestral patterns, it is in transpersonal, it's beyond one person's conscious. So, humanity lived on this planet for a while. Wars and bad things happened. We starved, we shed blood, we created gods, then we would move them from pedestals, then we'd create other gods. We did a lot of things and we abused our planet in the meantime. So all that is stored in our collective subconscious. Pluto said that you cannot heal a part and I'm a part and you're a part of the collective subconscious or unconscious or, or the human realm, let's call it. You cannot heal yourself as an individual to live your life to your fullest potential till this transpersonal realm heals. And this transpersonal realm stores all the trauma, all the wars, all the bloodshed, 
all everything that has ever been happening, including the memories of Inquisition, uh, all, all horrible things, they are literally in your cells as programs. So, how, where do we go from there as we heal this unconscious or subconscious, and there are tools for that now, and move to another level, which is conscious life, conscious living, and we allow our awareness to expand into embracing life consciously, then we can heal. For now, it sounds just like words. You probably read them in every New Age magazine. I hope I'll make them more kind of personally available to you in your heart and head, but these are general statements for now. So, like I said, this cycle is about unity's consciousness, and there are tools that where we co-create our reality, and for that, you know, unity is, is a very strange word to us. We all come and we're born and are trained in, in our school system in this individualistic consciousness, where it's all about me and com competing with other human beings. We don't even know what unity truly means. It, it's a, it's a vague, vaguely defined word. And if we will not redefine it, then this planet has not many chances to survive, I have to tell you. So the shift of 2012 is not only shift in consciousness. So, like I said, for the first time in the history of this planet, we can create our new reality. Let's move on and see, see what the tools are. We can just move on. And I already mentioned that. Yeah, what I did not mention that there is controversy in indigenous cultures and elders that keep this information that the shift around 2012-2015 is the main shift where we will see a lot of things happening uh, on Earth in terms of natural disasters and things like that, economical crisis, monetary system collapsing, it's all coming guys, it's only a matter of time. Uh, but some of them think that the shift will continue and this planet can redefine and be reborn in the matter of 60 to 100 years from now. But depending on what we do now, depending on what we do now and how do we define what is this unified consciousness, it's not just a word. Uh, unified consciousness really is when we all stand together as human beings and do something about it. We protect our planet. We use awareness and consciousness healing tools. We have these global meditation events. I have meditation events in my business. We have a small group in Calgary, and then we have all over the world, we have this meditation happening. It's every Monday or every second Monday. At my place, I have a small group right now, but it's ironic, I just don't have time to grow it in Calgary, but there are many people that virtually meditate with us. And if you have done any research into meditation, and you can go on my website, there are excellent links in there. My business cards are there somewhere. Uh, under Global Heart Coherence Meditation, and see what is the research about which I really cannot talk, because it will take me an hour. What happens when all our brains go in sync? When we do connect to this unity consciousness, when we meditate, hundreds of us together, thousands of us together, there is global consciousness project that had these eggs all over the earth, uh, monitoring what happens with the shifts in our consciousness and with, with the events like um, natural disasters. And there was very interesting research done around September 11. They knew it's going to happen. They might not have known what is going to happen, but it was clear that something was going to happen because all these monitors, they are computer monitors, they call them eggs, they were registering it. I lived in New York and I knew something was going to happen. So I moved one year before and uh, some of my dear friends died in 9-11. I knew it was clear to me because I'm sensing these things always. So that's what I mean by the, unify, by the uh, unity consciousness. We have this time to consciously recreate life on our planet. 
unified consciousness field around Earth. I don't know how many of you meditate here. Oh, great. Excellent. Anyone has seen this in your meditations? I see some people going, yeah. I actually did, and I didn't have a clue what it was. It wasn't activated. So again, it's not something I can discuss a lot, but if you want to make notes or make a mental note, you can research it further. It looks exactly like that. I was in Costa Rica at that time. Costa Rica is very unique from energy perspective point on Earth. Things I was able to tap in through meditation and visions in there just blew my mind and I still don't understand many of them. So that was one of them. The, the grid around our planet and it's being activated right now. So our planet is held in love and light, but what we do as species that are conscious, there are other conscious species here, by conscious I mean we can consciously co-create this reality. Because everything is conscious, even carrot is conscious if you look at it from that perspective. But dolphins, whales and humans are the only three species on this planet that have cortical brain and they are able, by the design of the brain, they are able to affect this reality. This is from where all these personal development courses came about, uh, which I'm not a big fan of, because we are like little children. We kind of took a practical part. You know, how do I make more money? I'm going to sit in meditation and manifest. It's coming in. Where is it? You know, so it's really, it's a really little bit more com complex than that. But it is true, though, that the design of our brain as, as an electromagnetic instrument, as a biological computer, is designed in a way we can alter reality. And same thing for dolphins and same thing for whales, but they're not so interested. They're supporting us. They're a very interesting civilization on this planet. So, um, um, what were the tools that were used to, to he for, for healing beyond conventional medicine? And uh, I don't think that people present here need me to convince them that conventional medicine is basically dying off. We will have emergency medicine left. So if there are any students here that study medicine, uh, you know, we will always need surgeons. We will always need emergency medicine. Uh, you know, if you have lost part of your arm, you better go to emergency room and get that fixed. But then, uh, then, then there is healing, and then there is a question: Why did why did that happen? There are no accidents, really. So, what has been developing for a while, beyond and above and beyond, as an, and as a matter of fact, before allopathic medicine or traditional medicine was energy medicine. So that's what something I've been practicing um, for years, till. I realized that now, as things are changing, I am practicing both energy medicine and consciousness medicine. So I'll explain what it is. Uh, I hope that makes sense if I will say that the molecules we are made of are a form of vibrating energy. So energy medicine is really at the core. If you look at how things are in our body, what, what they believed in and still do for some strange reason in allopathic or traditional medicine, what they believe in is that chemistry defines life. Chemistry. What happens? How chemicals move? But if we are energy, what moves the chemicals? So then life is not defined by the movement of the chemicals. It's a result of some other movement. So this other movement and function of movement is the movement of energy. So that's what defines life. But how does the energy know how to move? How does your heart know how to maintain all that rhythm and the brain? How, how does that, how is that possible? Who runs all these programs? Where is the main computer? By the way, it's interesting. Look at this pattern. It, it's, it's like a Christ consciousness grid. It's very interesting. I, I just came in and paid attention. So we don't know how the main computer looks like. Maybe it looks like that. I'll let you decide how it looks like. But certainly this energy that runs in our body is intelligent. There are programs written, they run us. There is program written when you are born and then there is program written when you will die. As a matter of fact, if any of you took interest 
and I certainly did, studying aging mechanisms and how we die. Theoretically speaking, we should not be. There is a program, there is a program in our cells that makes these cells to decay. There is, in other words, there is a program for a decay. So there is an intelligence everywhere for life, for birth, and for death. So this is energy medicine, and there are many tools of that. If we can just go further here. Um, and in, from the perspective of energy medicine, any disease can be redefined as a disruption of communication between energy fields. So, this is important, and I hope you'll keep some of this information. So you'll find these energy-based therapies now, because holistic medicine is now taking over, because Western medicine, in terms of, you know, surgeries and drugs, really cannot offer much, actually cannot offer anything, except, like I said, for emergency procedures, when the hardware is broken beyond repair. So medicine addresses hardware, really, right? It looks at you as if you're a, you know, a sack made out of skin with the bones and the meat inside. That's how they look at us. Which is really strange, considering humanity exists for a few thousand of years. So there is another really healing aspect of medicine, that's energy-based, which is homeopathy, bug flower essences, aromatherapy, acupuncture, hands-on healing modalities. And those grow big right now. Reiki, I think everyone does Reiki now. Actually, have, have a little issue with that. You can uh, take a weekend course and be a master of Reiki or something. And you know that that's a good thing that you take this course. Just don't. I don't think you can be a master of anything in a weekend or even two yeah. or even three. You know, I do have a master in psychology, but to me, human consciousness that I study and work with for 27 years is a puzzle, and I will never. You know, call myself. I'm a master in human consciousness. You know, please email me your questions. <laughs> so, still, it's good awareness. It's growing that energy can deliver. Energy can be delivered through hands. Healing touch many. Light therapies. Those grow big right now, with the new generations of lasers and photon therapy. I have a few of these toys in my business, and I love them. I still consider them secondary though, but they work, they, they, they are just lovely, I love them. Biofeedback and bioresonance, I don't know if you know that, how a computer communicates with our energy fields, organ frequency stimulators and all these other fancy stuff. Uh, new integrative mind-body tools, that's another generation. So here is energy medicine uh, that says Processes are defined by the movement of energy, as opposed to chemistry. Energy defines chemistry, as we determined before. So, energy psychology, all kinds of tapping therapies. Emotional freedom technique, EFT, I don't know if you're familiar, a lot of psychologists in Calgary are now doing this. So when you roll your eyes in a specific pattern, and it addresses the emotional trauma stored in the brain on an energy level. It does work well for emotional trauma, belief system repatterning. So these all address subtle communication and electrical networks, including our thoughts and emotions, and how they are restored or reactivated. So these are the energy medicine tools. So it's just a picture, it's not a photo that I love. Uh, this is how we really look like. We're electrical beings of light. And I do have um, an ability to see energy field, or some of them, I should say, some of them, not all of them, those quantum fields of energy around the body. And we look really beautiful. I think if um, people would be able to see each other, something like that, uh, we wouldn't be so aggressive towards each other, because we are not really what we're looking at. When you see somebody in their physical body, there is so much beyond it. It's just a picture I like, like I said, so I threw it in there. It's not a photo. I do have some amazing photos. Oh, and there is the photo. You can see it, but we can't. Uh oh. Well, there are no, there are now scan. Oh, here it is. Thank you. This is actually an actual photo taken by the PIP scan, which is a new generation of equipment. 
developed commonly by Russian and American scientists uh, at UNESCO. So they scan, uh, they scan, they can, they can actually pick up these subtle emanations around the body. So this is a hand of a healer in a healing session, giving energy. So I think it's pretty cool. And then you can go further. And this is this is amazing. This is also PIP scan. Do you see this? So what this is, it's an amputated limb. This person doesn't have a leg below the knee. But what you also see is this. So on the energy level, on the level of the blueprint. You know, have you ever heard about what's called phantom pains, like they cut your limb and... But yeah, the network is still there, the energy is still there, and your brain still perceives that you have a limb. So now you can have a scan, and like I said, this is not some picture stolen from internet, this comes from a reputable source, uh, and uh, from the science for bio, from the Institute for Biofield Sciences, that is funded by UNESCO, and they do these PAP scans, and they capture the energy field. I, I find it's fascinating because, like I said, I you know there are people that can see these things, and here they are. Now equipment is going there. This is curling in photography. That's another thing you might want to look on internet if you'd like. Uh, this is the same thing. Uh, no, it's not the same thing. It's the first generation. It's the, the PIP scans are much more complex. So this these are the pictures of the leaf with the chi around it. People that know Tai Chi, Qigong, well, that's Qi. Or Wei Qi, it's, a, it's an energy field of a specific frequency. The next picture is more fascinating because it is, uh, the leaf is not there. But the energy is. So it's the same leaf, but they took away the, the part and now, but you still see the blueprint of the leaf on this high frequency camera. Yeah, these are just pictures. So all the all the equipment now it's all experimental, meaning you will not see it in your, you know, M MRI Mayfair or something in Calgary. But these are this is actually the picture of a yoga who did lots of meditation in his life. And you can see, look at the field around his head. And that is the same person but in a different skin. Look at the density and the frequency. This is infrared scan so there is a that, that makes me think about the pictures of saints in many religions people simply saw these auras around the head they're real i see them do you see i have one too no no okay well then you just don't see energy well when you, when you meditate a lot it does change the the patterning of the brain it does change and i actually do have my picture of not made on PIP, but just purely in photography. So I do have a picture of my aura. It's very interesting to look at. So um, as we spoke a little bit earlier, energy, so how medicine was developing in modern day, the day that we know. There is allopathic traditional medicine that thinks processes of life are defined by chemistry, and there is energy medicine says, no, wait a minute, it's defined by energy. But what is really that that connects everything and penetrates everything? It's uh, consciousness. We all are one in consciousness. The plants, the animals, the rocks, that is what is the quality of this energy. It is consciousness. It's conscious energy. It's not just energy. It's not like light in this lamp. But it comes from that field, though, as well. So I already t talked about this. Life function is defined. Chemistry structure, energy flow. And now here we move to new medicine, which is consciousness medicine. And I'm going to name two main modalities that I really would invite you to explore because there are people that are doing them. Interaction of morphogenic fields of consciousness. Anyone heard the term of morphogenic field or morphic field? You might want to look at it. There are fascinating uh, videos on YouTube and scientists talking about it. To put it in a simple way, this is where we go into this transpersonal realm, beyond person. So, 
the, to put it in a simple way, morphic field or morphogenetic or morphogenic, which is one and the same thing, is an informational field that stores information of a specific nature. It could be your ancestral information. And by that I don't mean, you know, how you look like. It is also how you walk like, it's how you think like, it is how you look, uh, how you find or don't find your partners. It defines everything. So these morphogenic fields of consciousness are more global and we belong to them. So if you look at you, you have an energy field. And then there is a morphogenic family field from which you came from and you're connected to that. And then there is field that we can call morphic field of culture in North America. And by my accent you can um, guess that I wasn't born here. So I come from a different morphic field. But I morphed here with this field. So I kind of hold both now because I live here for a while. So the morphogenic field is an informational field that holds energy, information and through energy of a specific nature. And as consciousness medicine is discovering lately, the only way to really heal us as species, to heal literally your organs, your liver, your eyesight, your anything physical, because there is nothing physical. It's all energy. Energy that is structured in specific patterns. And those patterns and their structures are defined by these fields. So for us, to heal us, to heal me and Peter and John and Mary, we really have now to raise above this individualistic consciousness and look at what is the field I come from. So this is where the new therapies come in. They're called consciousness medicine. So uh, that's what I like. One of my favorite sayings, that you cannot solve a problem with the same consciousness that created it. I use the word consciousness a lot. Um, really, truly, we have, we tried drugs, we tried pills, we tried surgeries, we tried acupuncture, which works to a certain degree. Um, drugs, like I said, are just emergency tool. But, you know, if you look at overall population, which I see in my business a lot, you know, kids dying of cancer, people are sick. We're a society of very, very ill people. I can't go to malls because I see energy and I interact with energy. I just want to cry. I just want to sit down on the floor and cry. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I look at all these people and we are ill. We are so, so ill. We don't have to be so ill. And you know, your best advice is exercise and eat better. Well, that's a good start. But really, really, you know, it is not defined by that. I know a lot of people who you can call, uh, you know, health nuts. They read all the labels, they eat organic food only, and they're sick, and then they die of cancer. Explain me this. <laughs> so, there is something beyond that, apparently. Yes, eat well and exercise, but it won't do it. The field you come from carries information. Information patterns you, so we have to heal that field. And we have to change our perspective on how we look at human being. And I honestly don't go to malls. Not only around Christmas, unless my daughter needs something. I, ju I just... Um, makes me so deeply sad. So many sick people. Uh, so consciousness medicine. It's a definition that is actually my own definition. I'm not sure it's so new how to define it, but that's how I define it. It's a science studying connections and interrelationships within the unified field of consciousness. You know, the point here I'm making is connections and interrelationships. Let's see, I see two people sitting in the front row. Here is one person and here is another. But as they two sit, they exchange energy. And there is a third entity formed already that is not this person and not that person, but it's kind of a mixture of both of them, in a way. So, how, how do you, it's not something tangible, you cannot put it in a bottle. Like, your liver has a relationship with your heart, and if this relationship is disrupted, you'll get either sick heart or sick liver. Is there a bottle for that? I, I, I don't know, in 27 years no one created it. So, it's all these.
relationships, information traveling, larger fields that define the health of smaller parts. Energy is a web that connects all matter. This energy is conscious, as I said, as I said, and disconnected through unified field of energy consciousness. And this unified field of, un of consciousness holds all these morphic fields that have human history, that have everything in there, and all your family history as well. That that being the biggest problem, by the way. After Christmas, everyone has a beautiful, loving family. Absolutely, everyone, no problems. No, no, I, I didn't think so. Just no. Yeah. Okay, so to get admitted to the next stage of our development, we have to we have a test to to live through, and this is a test of consciousness. Can we really stand together, and can we build our life in a more conscious way? Our, our slight person is gone, that's okay. So, magic will happen. I'm pretty much really rushing. Okay. So, I already said that we can scan that the human psyche includes transpersonal realms, and those need to be healed. And I already said that, so we can scan through this. Thank you. And here. So, I'm just going to say a few words about that, and I know I'm running a little late. But I feel like I'm running a marathon. These are very exciting things for me. I can talk for hours.